Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Telemedicine, it's a relatively new concept, but with the rapid changes in technology over the past few decades, telemedicine has turned into this complex, integrated service. It's used in, in hospitals, in doctor's offices, in homes, just about any kind of healthcare facility you can think of. And here to tell us how it's used and why it's so effective is Mayo Clinic Physician Assistant, Ms. Erin Mason, and Emergency Room Physician, Dr. Chris Russi. Welcome both of you to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having us back. Good to have you. So Aaron, we had a previous life uh, working together here at Mayo, but uh, you now um, are out in the hinterlands and you're using telemedicine. Tell us how that works. That's correct. So I'm using telemedicine as part of my uh, everyday work life in the critical access emergency department that I work in, uh, mostly in Cannon Falls and uh, Lake City. And uh, in these critical access hospitals, there's usually just myself as a sole provider and one, sometimes two nurses. Uh, I use telemedicine almost on a daily basis when I need a second set of eyes to look at a patient with me or uh, to problem solve through cases that maybe you know, different and interesting, um, as well as just kind of shooting ideas back and forth with the uh, the other person on the uh, on the other end of the monitor, usually Dr. Russi or one of his colleagues. Dr. Russi, what equipment do you need to set up telemedicine? It's tricky. Um, so there's obviously fairly significant upfront capital to put a program like this together. Where we were fortunate is Mayo Clinic had already invested in um, uh, partnering with a company called InTouch Health, and they provide our software and our hardware uh, for for the service. Um, so on my end, when I'm sitting in the telehealth bunker in the emergency department, really I just need a computer. I need a good internet connection, I need a good camera, and then the software to link into the, we call them affectionately a robot, but a cart uh, that is sitting with Erin up in Lake City or Cannon Falls or her, whatever her locale is. Which are small towns uh, close to Rochester mm -hmm. and part of the Mayo Clinic <clears throat> healthcare system. Correct. Erin, what equipment do you need on your end? There's uh, there's a few different ways that I can contact a uh, physician on the other end. One is either by just telephone. Um, I can call and discuss a case with Dr. Russi. Uh, another way is through our medical record system. We, could, we have a texting option where I could just send over a quick request or sentence or have a look at this, that, et cetera. Uh, and then the third way, which is probably the most useful, I think, is video. So I actually bring the video camera into the room and I explain it to the patient. It's a lot like Skype, where you're seeing somebody on the screen, they're interacting with you in real time. Uh, it gives that Dr. Russi an opportunity to see the patient as if he was sitting bedside with me. So it's not a lot, it's not a lot of equipment nope. on either end. Nope. No. You affectionately called it the hinterlands, but there's a lot of this country that is the hinterlands. Sure. And so how does this uh, how does this make a difference for patients? Well, for for patients, it makes a difference in a couple of actually big ways. Um, a lot of patients who are not able to travel all the way to Rochester to see uh, specialists or have the expertise they may otherwise only get in this location. So they'll come to my emergency department and with whatever issue they have going on, and it's a way for them to tap into these this huge specialty resource that we have here in Rochester, Minnesota. So if you have a question, and it's almost always something that you've seen in the emergency room, that's where mm -hmm. you work in these smaller right. hospitals, smaller settings, so then you can call on Dr. Russi anytime to ask him any question about the patient, and it's audio and video, Dr. Correct. Russi? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to jump on. Uh, the uh, other major benefit to patients is the ability to help care for the critically ill. So Aaron, as you mentioned, the hinterlands, but these are small rural communities that are resource limited, right? She's often the only provider in that entire facility. Mm -hmm. And so when we run a resuscitation here in the academic campus, we bring teams of people, right, to care for that one individual. Mm -hmm. We wanna emulate that to whatever degree we can for her, right? It's not that Aaron can't do the job. She does it very well, but we bring on a telepharmacist with us. We bring on an emergency medicine boarded physician. And together, we're seeing the patient. Uh, we're bouncing off ideas, mm -hmm. talking about tactics and strategies. I can, on the back end, help offload her cognitive burden 
substantially by getting an accepting physician for a transfer, getting them a helicopter, getting a critical care transport team. And so allows her to stay at the bedside and really focus on the patient and, and continue to do her good work. Um, if you are uh, resuscitating somebody at one of these smaller facilities, uh, then Dr. Russi can help you with regard, now I think it's time to shock them, now I think you should give them this drug, et cetera? Yes, absolutely. Uh, often, I'm the one who's running the resuscitation or the code, we call it. and. Uh, Dr. Russi has access, he can see my monitors, he can see my labs that have gone through, he can see the patient, and it's as if we're standing next to each other in this room discussing the case. Uh, I think it's been about two minutes, I think it's time we shock now. Oh, I agree, That's we should do that. Or uh, we've tried th this algorithm, we've tried the first, second, and third type of medication. What do you think, what, what should we do next? And he may have a suggestion. Uh, and we collaborate and talk about it together and care for the patient at the same time together. You ever say, have you ever seen anything like this? <laughs> I say that a lot. <laughs> does this does it cut down on healthcare costs over the course of time? Do you think it's gonna make a difference? Oh, definitely, because often by using the telemedicine program, I have access to the uh, consultants, the specialists that I would normally have to send the patient to Rochester for. And so it keeps them from having to travel, having to go through the ER here, having to make a specific appointment for um, a situation that could easily be taken care of through the telemedicine. I think it saves a lot of time, a lot of money, and it, it gives a lot of satisfaction to the patients. How about privacy? And are there state regulations that you have to follow? And are they the same around the country? No, they're fairly uniform. But I mean, obviously, we want to be HIPAA compliant, right? So back to the technology question, right? The, the infrastructure to transmit the data has to be secure. Mm -hmm. um, we're about to launch a tele-sexual assault program. Uh, and that obviously is going to require significant uh, privacy. Uh, it's a Tell very, a sexual assault. Yeah. yeah so um, a sexual assault victim is seen in a, again, rural, austere location. And previously, uh, those cases would often have to just drive all the way to Rochester to be seen by folks that know how to do this exam. Hmm. It's technically challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to do it really well for the legal perspective. Um, but now we're bringing on resources through a telehealth mechanism to allow that person to stay there and we guide them through the particular exam and evidence collection. Again, cutting out a transport, cutting out a second ED visit. Making it more timely. Making it more absolutely. timely, exactly, absolutely. And easier so. on the patient because they don't have to tell their story twice. They don't have to go through everything twice, which uh, we were always worried that when we sent them on to Rochester that maybe they wouldn't come, they just go home. Dr. Russi, is this gonna be um, something that can help with overburdened, overloaded physicians and healthcare providers? Uh, we hope so. I mean, uh, to be able to, what brings me the most joy is um, being able to offload the cognitive burden of the providers that are out there, right? So it's not just taking care of the patient, but it's the myriad of other things mm -hmm. that they have to do in the moment. Um, and when somebody's really, really ill, it's difficult to remember that task list. And so I can really help her on the back end with, as I mentioned before, transport issues, uh, getting an accepting physician, ideas on medications. One thing that's really been interesting is, um, in her example of cardiac arrest, she can really stay at the bedside mm -hmm. and focus on the patient. And in a couple instances, I've actually pulled the camera out of the room and I've talked to the family okay. on mm -hmm. her behalf while the resuscitation is happening. So uh, it, it's been extraordinarily helpful. The family's updated, right? The patient's, patient's receiving good care. And yeah. Well, and how great for the patient having the expertise of the physicians at the big house mm -hmm. when Absolutely. you're in a small town close by and right. they don't have to get here to have that care. Right. Pretty amazing. Right. That's often usually how I introduce it or I'll, I'll tell the patient, you know, this is a way for you to get Rochester care all the way out here, 40, 50 miles away. And people seem very pleased with that. And that's exactly what happens. All right. Telemedicine allowing health. Prof <clears throat> Sorry. Telemedicine allowing healthcare professionals to evaluate, to diagnose, to even treat patients at a distance. It's an alternative to in-person visits. And it's already an important part of the American healthcare system. Our thanks to physician assistant, Ms. Erin Mason, and ER physician, Dr. Chris Russi. Thanks for being here, both of you. Thank you. Thank thanks you for having much. us.